piercing, sawing, call it what you want, but you need two things to do it, a saw frame and saw blades. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this week's film. My name's Andrew Berry, and welcome to At The Bench's YouTube channel. Piercing and sawing is a technique that is often sort of skipped over and glanced over when it comes to books. You read a book on, on jewellery techniques and they may devote a page, two pages if you're lucky, on how to choose a saw, how to sit correctly, how to pierce correctly, how to choose a saw blade and so forth. And that's what we're going to be covering in these few films. Today, primarily, we're going to be looking at saw frames, showing you the frames that are available, showing you the pros and cons and how good and how bad they are, and also deciding on what size saw blade you need for a particular job. Now, when I started out in my career, I went to university, um, I've got a degree in three-dimensional design and the first, one of the first tools that I bought was this. This is a simple Eclipse, I'm not quite sure if they make it, it's a PS51 made in England saw frame. I have used this for the last 30 odd years, absolutely brilliant. The handle now is nicely rounded, nicely smoothed out. And I absolutely love this frame. It's got a nice thickness here um, and I love it. It's simple, nothing can go wrong with it. Very, very basic frame. This has got a standard throat. That's this part here from the blade to the back. I think that's roughly around about three inches, three and a half inches. Um, standard length here. It's got little wing nuts to be able to tighten the blade. And it's really quite a simple frame. It's a fixed frame. The frame here is fixed. Ideal starter. Now, another frame that you can buy is this one here. This one is called um, an adjustable frame because the frame here comes along and it has this area which is adjustable, which allows the depth here to move up and down. So what's the benefits of this frame? Well, when you're piercing and perhaps the saw blade breaks, perhaps it breaks near the end and it's too short then to fit into this frame, you can simply move this frame down and attach the blade here and here. Again, simple little winglets hold the blade in place. Absolutely fantastic idea. You can get more use out of your blades. Um, got no problems with this at all. It's a fantastic frame, it's a fantastic idea. But for me, I find that when you're sawing then, perhaps you've reduced your blade down to, I don't know, three inches or so, you've got this part here that sticks into your, into your hand. And when you, you're trying to saw in this position, this gets in the way. You can't move it down this way because your hand is a bit wonky. Come here and you're sawing, your hand goes down this gets in the way. I don't like it. I don't like anything to interrupt the nice, relaxed, free-flowing, soaring motion that I've got. Also, because on a saw blade, I'll demonstrate on these blades here. This is a pack of blades. The first inch or so of a saw blade is plain. There is no teeth. There is no cutting edge. It all happens from here to here. Now, the, my problem would be is that if the blade has snapped, part the way along and you come to clamp that section in your piercing saw frame, the blade is very fragile where the teeth are and there's chance that that, that blade will break quite quickly again. Plus, the shorter the blade, the quicker you have to keep moving your hand up and down. And for me, I like to have a long stroke up and down using the full length of the blade. If the blade is six inches, I want to use six inches. I want to have a nice rhythmical sawing action. If I use a short blade, well then I'm doing this. And I feel that I'm not getting the full, um, I don't know, it's, it's just, oh, it's just, oh, it's like this. It, it's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And the cut is not necessarily going to be lovely and smooth. You're doing this, you're doing up and down, up and down, up and down. I don't like it. My preference, adjustable frame for me, is a no-no. It's a fantastic idea. Loads of people love these frames, uh, but for me, because this area here sticks into the back or the, the, the side part of my hand there when I'm sawing, I don't like it. So for me, 
not an option. Loads of other frames out there. This is a Swiss frame, different type of fastening. The blade goes into a hole on either end. Some people don't like these frames because uh, the lemel and the dust gets caught up in the bottom of the holes here and they have problems putting the blades in, the blades get jammed and so forth. Again, a fixed frame, plastic handle, don't like plastic handles, I find my hands sweat if I'm doing a lot and it's not even contoured like the nice wooden ones are. Oh. A sausage really isn't it like a sausage so anyway okay <laughs> so another type of frame that's out there is the new concepts new concepts saw developed by um, Brian it's absolutely brilliant um, started off with this one here this is titanium it's got a nice cutout because you don't need the weight just need the strength lovely lovely type of saw wooden handle for me, the colour is a bit bright. Apparently red is supposed to aid concentration. I don't know how good a statement that is. Um, but it has some adjustments up here. Um, it has the little holes, like we did with the Swiss one, that the blade goes into. And again, a lot of people don't like it because, as I said, it gets trapped. I'll come to this little area in a moment. Again, I've got another new concepts. Exactly the same, a different type of fitting up here, but I'll come to that one in a moment. The only saw that I don't have is the green lion saw. Um, I've always wanted a green lion saw. I would love to try out a green lion saw. If there's any suppliers out there who would love to send me one to play around with, to test, to do a product review, please, I would be, oh, open arms, please send it to me. I'd love to try it. Apparently the green lion saw has had some fantastic reviews. I would love to try it for myself absolutely would love it. Okay, so we basically know what saw frames are out there, apart from this one. forgot this one. When you're sawing, you're limited to the amount, the travel of saw. We've got the depth here, roughly around about three and a half inches, and we can cut a piece of metal roughly around about three and a half inches into the metal before the back of the frame here starts to play up and, and touch the metal. And if you're cutting out a lovely, um, nice bowl, intricate pattern upon a nice plate or so forth, something like this is gonna be quite limiting because you have only this depth to go into the metal itself. So what can you buy? You can buy this type of frame. This is a very deep frame this is. Again, this is a, an adjustable one. So again, adjustable frame down here. But this enables us to cut further into a sheet because it has this greater depth here. And this is ideal if you're doing some intricate piercing on perhaps a nice a large saucer, a large dish, something like that, because you can get your blade right into the center without the metal interfering with the back of the saw as a normal saw blade. Whereas I've bought this and I think I've used it four times in about 30 years. It doesn't come out very often. It gathers dust in my drawer, but when I do need it, it is completely invaluable, absolutely brilliant. So those are the saws, lots of saws to choose from. If it was me and I'm starting out, just go for a simple fixed frame like this one here with the little wing nuts on the sides here. Literally nothing can go wrong with this. As I said, I've had this for over 30 years. It's, it's bomb proof, absolutely fantastic. Let's talk about blades now. Okay, so simple thing with blades is the thicker the metal that you are cutting out, the thicker the blade, the thinner the metal you're cutting out, the thinner the blade. Now, I've got some very thin blades. I've got, I think I got size, oh, I don't know what they come in. Is it five stroke O, something like that? I've got for very, very delicate piercing. And I got some really thick blades, perhaps two or three nice thick blades. So I use them occasionally if need be, but the blades I use the most are three stroke O or two stroke O a lot of people use. Three stroke O is my workhorse sort of saw blade. That three stroke O is, is, a, is a number that is set um, to the saw blade sort of world standard, so to speak. And if you go into a jewelry supplies and you ask for a three stroke O, they know exactly what you're after. Various manufacturers produce blades that are supposed to be better than others. There are some laser blades they're called, there are some um, king blades, gold blade standards, lots and lots of blades. I would advise you to buy good quality blades. 
don't buy bundles of cheap blades on auction sites or from unknown suppliers because your piercing, your sawing, the accuracy of that depends 99 times out of 100 on those saw blades. If those saw blades and those teeth aren't machined correctly and they're slightly off, when you're sawing a straight line, the blade will want to go to one side or go to the other side, or perhaps they're uneven and you won't get a nice even cut. So always buy a good quality branded blade. I'm not going to name any blades here, but obviously go for the tool catalogs, buy a nice quality blade because at the end of the day the quality of your cutting and your piercing is dependent upon the quality of the blades so don't skimp on the blades as i said i use two stroke o blades or three stroke o blades for the majority of my work they say you should have at least three teeth in contact with the metal so say my my metal is here Let's do this by here so I can see, there we go. This is my metal, side view of my metal. You've got to have three teeth in contact with that metal all the time. If you have more teeth, the blade is going to be too fine. You may end up snapping the blade. If you only have two teeth in contact with that bit of metal, the blade's too thick. It's going to uh, cause the metal to chatter as you're sawing and it's going to be quite aggressive and you're going to not have accurate piercing. So always try and get three teeth in contact with the metal at the right at the same time. Very hard, I know, but the majority of work that we do, three stroke O, two stroke O blades are absolutely brilliant. And when I want to cheat a little bit and I want to saw some thin sheet, I will angle the blade forward so I can get more teeth in contact with the metal. Little tip there, but that only works for straight lines, but we're gonna to come to that in another film. You buy the saw blades in bundles of 12. You can buy them by the gross 144, so you're gonna get 12 bundles. So the blades come in bundles like this. They come always come with this little bit of thin wire that is wrapped around the blades. Now, a lot of people will take a blade out. They will unwrap, they will take a blade out, and then twist the bundle back and twist the wire back together, and that's an ideal way to hold all the blades together. There's one little tip that I learned from a gentleman, a good friend of mine. Um, he has a website, I'll link it down below. It's jewelrymonk.com. And he suggests, have a look at the blades because blades will have a direction. They will either be going downwards or they'll be going upwards, depending on which way you hold the bundle. Now, put my visor on for this. Have a look at the blades. And if the blades are pointing downwards, this direction, yeah, this direction, to come and choose a blade, pick one where the teeth are going downwards and simply pull out that saw blade. It comes out nice and easy because the teeth are not going against the bundle. So you can take a blade out. That saves a lot of time instead of having to unwrap take a blade out and then wrap it back up together again. Saves a lot of time. As I said, that little tip was sort of brought to my attention. Um, jewelrymonk.com, check out his website down below. If the teeth are pointing upwards, you're never gonna be able to pull it up because the teeth are gonna be catching on the wire. Turn it around the other way, get the, and it comes straight out of the bundle. Nice, simple, and easy. When you come to use very, very fine, fine blades, you've got to be really, really careful because they're very delicate. You must be careful that you don't put too much pressure on the blade. You don't push against the blade um, because they will break. You've got to pay more attention and go a lot slower because they're finer and the cut that they produce is really, really fine as well. If you use thick blades, well then the thickness of the cut is going to be wider. You're going to lose a little bit more material and they're going to be a little bit more robust, but they're going to be harder and a bit more um, aggressive to cut. So that's why I only occasionally use the thick blades and the very thin blades. As I said, three stroke O, two stroke O blades, absolutely fine. So how do we put them into our piercing saw? You have to make sure that the blade is pointing towards the handle and pointing outwards. There's not much point having the blade pointing towards the back of the throat here because it's never ever going to work. So the teeth will always have a direction. These teeth here are pointing downwards in this direction, so like this here, pointing downwards like this, and they need to be pointing towards the handle. Now, 
I always do it this way. I always put the handle against my chest and then put the other end against my bench peg, whether you wanna put it here or put it by there. Some people will actually force it in with their hand pushing into it this way. So make sure the teeth are pointing towards the handle. Another way you can check if you haven't got good eyes or you haven't got your visor on, is just run your finger along the blade. And one direction, your finger will be able to slide along. The other direction, your finger catches. Well, if that's the case, put those teeth in that direction. You've got it here, because if I'm going this way, I'm putting the blade this way, my finger's getting caught, so let's paint, put them towards the handle. Put it into the end of the handle here, tighten up the nut, and you need to tension the blade. Number's point, just putting the, the blade into the frame like that, because it's never ever gonna work. It's loose, it's gonna snap. So push with your chest, add a bit of tension to the frame, put it into the end here and turn the nut and that will hold on to the blade. If you don't want to hurt your chest, well then you can always sort of hold your hand here, push your hand, make sure, it's a little bit harder this week, you've got to try and get everything together and you've only got one hand to do it, put it into there and tighten. So you can do it that way by pushing with the blade, with the blade, pushing with your hand, you know what I mean. So the blade's in place, it has to be of a certain tension, Ping it with your finger. Very nice, nicely tensioned blade. If it sounds a bit like this, it's too loose, it wobbles in the frame. Always make sure you get a nice sound, something like that. Exactly the same way with the adjustables, you put the blade into place, you push down with your chest or push down with your hand. Exactly the same way you've got the little wing nuts to do exactly the same there. The Swiss frame with these little ends here, you can put the, the blade in. A little bit easier actually this way, you can push it, tighten it up, the blade is nicely held in place. Now, new concepts developed a way of tensioning the blade without you having to push the saw against your peg or against the edge of the desk. Because this area here is fixed, and this is the problem with a lot of, a lot of times when the blade snaps, Sometimes the blade will flex, blade, yeah, the blade will flex, and perhaps the throat here will actually move as well, and it'll lose tension on the blade. These new concept saws get around that by having this area here that doesn't flex, it is completely rigid. So you need, <coughs> excuse me, a way of tensioning the blade. That is this mechanism up at the end here. This end clamp is on this thread here, and as you turn this knurled nut here, it pulls the clamp up or releases it. So what you would simply do is put the blade into place. Uh, put that down like that. Put the blade into place. So the blade is loose. And now we can simply turn the top nut here. We turn it and you can go from a bit of a dull thud and you keep turning. you get a nice ping, a nice sound. Nice simple way of adjusting the blade. Then they developed this mechanism which is more of a cam upon the top. So it's another simple way of doing it. You would get your saw blade. Make sure you get the direction and go in right. So that's going to be pointing downwards towards the handle, pointing out. We would put this into place into the clamp. So again, the blade is slightly loose. So again, the blade is obviously slightly loose. We pull the tension just so it gets a little bit of tension and then we simply turn the handle across the top. That pulls the cam up like that and that will now tension the blade automatically. You will snap the blade, you want to change it, you release the cam, you put the blade in, put the new blade in, turn the cam, and the blade is always set at that same tension. Absolutely simple, brilliant, brilliant idea. Okay, so there we go. There we have a quick, quick, a quick 20 odd minutes talking about saw frames, 
and saw blades. Hope you enjoyed that. If there's another type of frame out there that I haven't covered, like the green lion saw, and you would like to send me one to be included in our YouTube films and for us to do a product review on At The Bench, please, I'd love to try it out. I've never actually tried one out yet, so please do send me one. I would <laughs> love to play around with it. Okay, that's about it for saw blades and for piercing saws. Please don't forget, if you haven't done so already, subscribe and smash that little bell icon if that is something that you're into to be notified when films go live on our youtube channel don't forget please i'd love you to give this film a thumbs up if you like it leave a comment down below as i said i'll leave a few links down below to uh, the jewelry monk he's got a fantastic website there's a podcast as well and don't forget share it with your friends as i said piercing soaring it is a very very important technique to learn and to understand. Just, just don't simply go and grab a piercing saw. <sighs> Make an educated purchase. Decide what you want. Decide how you're going to use it and then go and buy the right saw for you. So, thank you for watching. My name's Andrew Berry for At The Benches YouTube channel. Take care. I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Yeah, saw frames. Saw frames and blades. That's what we're going to be talking about in this week's <clears throat> this week's. You need a saw frame and saw blades. Well, oh, welcome. Piercing, sawing. <laughs> saw frames and saw blades. Welcome. Oh, flipping. A saw frame and saw blades. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this week's film. My name's Andrew Berry, and welcome to At The Bench's YouTube channel. Yes. <laughs> when I cut, oh, I'm going to make a bit of paper. How many saws does one need? I've got another half a dozen saws downstairs. How many saws do we need? Is one saw enough? I don't know. Never use these. Never use these saws, these, these ones. But this one I do love. This one. I must admit, and I do, I do love my new concept saw. Again, I've used that for years and years and years and years. Absolutely brilliant.